what you are about to see is a great portfolio of a junior product designer with some experience in web design. I often notice how junior product designers, they try to chase this ideal product, they put so much energy into finding this perfect idea to create a project for, but the key is actually in balancing out your project and this portfolio does this perfectly. If you are new to this channel, my name is Ines, I am a principal product designer with 16 years of experience and I teach UX design on this channel, subscribe. And without further ado, meet Thu Ha, a product designer from Paris, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. And the first thing that we need to assess is the portfolio layout. And I must say, for me, a portfolio layout is very much important. Usually when we meet people offline, we first assess how are they dressed, how are they looking, do they care about their appearance or not. And the portfolio layout for me is an equivalent of this first impression, but done online. So I like this appearance, I like that this is a branded portfolio, I like that this is minimalistic and the emphasis is placed on the project. The next thing that I usually assess is the person's background and this page is also doing it nicely because I can see that the person is not a newbie in the UX UI design field or just in the design field because they had an experience working in graphic web design field and this is for me important to assess their level as well and to approach their projects in the right manner. And I also see that this person did the product design internship and that gives me a clear information about them wanting to be a product designer and switching from working in a web design, UX design field to working in-house. And especially I wanted to highlight those two projects on the top. The first project is a thesis project and the second one is the project from this product design internship. And I really like how they are working together. And this is what I said in the beginning, we usually chase this ideal project, we want to show everything we're capable of in just one perfect case study. But what this person does is that it places different projects showcasing different aspects of her competence together and that allows me to assess their level in a more competent way. So let's see what's in these projects. The first project is a thesis project and as we would expect from a thesis project, it is a generic project. So it is not a project for a particular company, it is not a project for a well-known product, nothing like that. The person is taking a very high level problem which is the pet's anxiety and is asked to innovate, to think about this problem, to research the space and to suggest a solution. And this is exactly what this person does here. And we see that it, there is the description of the challenge. The link of course will be down below so you can read it in more details. And overall I like this project and of course it is an educational project. That's why the person was given enough time to do the research, maybe research was even the major emphasis on this course and that usually what differs the university projects from the projects from boot camps because on a boot camp you usually don't have so much time you don't have a year to work on this project and that's why we see a bit more in depth uh, the research part and some interesting findings and ideas as well but overall generic bootcamp projects and university thesis based projects they are more or less the same in a sense that they are giving you no real world constraints they are giving you real problem yes but this problem is very generic and your innovation or your product is detached from the reality of the day-to-day -day life of the users we will never know if this product will be a successful business idea that's why we are not solving any business problem there. But anyway, let's move on and I wanted to highlight what I especially like about this project is that the person is showing me some options that they had. So we see we have their different options with branding, we also see there are some different UI style explorations and that also gives me a good idea about how well this project was researched, not only on the part when we talked with users and we were studying competitor analysis, but on the part when we were actually trying different solutions. 
And unfortunately, this part is what many people skip in order to make the case studies a bit shorter or maybe not valuing the design explorations that much. But I, as a hiring manager, I would really love to see that because that will give me the idea that you can explore more solutions, that you are not sticking to the very first idea that came to your mind. So this is a well done project for a thesis project, for a university project. I think the idea is nice and we can see that the UI part is also done very, very well. And what I also wanted to highlight for this case study is that we have there a lot of animations. Animations are always a cherry on top. They allow our portfolios to stand out. They are easy to perceive. They are easy to consume and they are over overall grabbing the attention of a hiring manager. By the way, if you like this video and you want to receive more videos like that, then give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. It's important for me and for YouTube algorithms to start recommending you similar videos. And if you are working on your portfolio right now and you cannot figure how to balance out your projects, then go and check the link down below. I will be launching a program soon that will be tackling this issue and will be helping people to finish their portfolio photos and to make them convert to the interviews. This is going to be the last and only program I will have about the portfolios because I'm overall done with this topic. I think I told you everything that I know about the portfolios and I basically condensed all of that knowledge in this program. So go and check out the link in the video description. We are going to be launched soon, but the places will be also limited, unfortunately, because I will be providing there my one on one support. That's why you will have to be on the wait list to know when the program starts. Okay, and we are moving on. Yet, of course, if we would only have this project in the portfolio and maybe two more projects like that, that would not leave me satisfied because I would have no idea of how this person could work in some real life constraints. Luckily, in this portfolio, we have a different project to assess. And this is the project done for a real company during the internship. And you see the problem that that was solved is very much business related. This is the case study that is tackling the problem of verified reviews, which is a really a big problem for e-commerce stores and every e-commerce store hiring manager can relate to this problem. And we see here that this project is not aiming that high as the previous one. We don't have branding there and we don't have any exploration of some innovative technologies that we could use on the product. As in the previous case study where the person was exploring some interesting solutions of how to play with pets when the people are out using holograms and things like that. Very interesting idea. Here we are very much solving our mundane problems, but this is also 99% of the problems that you will be solving at the workplace. And because of that, I can also see if the person can work with the real life constraints. And yes, this project is very incremental. In comparison to the first one, it's almost like too small. However, this is the exact size of a project and of a problem that a junior UX designer or a product design intern will be solving at the workplace. And of course, if you would be only having projects like that, in your portfolio, that would never give me an idea of what you can do if you have no constraints. How can you ideate? How can you work on UI if you have no benchmark, if you have no constraints and no design systems? So these projects are especially valuable when they are matched together. And that is exactly what makes this portfolio interesting for me. If I would be hiring for an intern or a junior product design position, I would definitely call this person and I would invite them to talk on an interview. So this perfect balance is what I wanted you to highlight and to remember. You will never find a perfect client or a perfect project when you are just starting out. But if you will show me a variety of projects you were working on, they could all get together in a very nice picture and they will give me an idea of everything that you are capable of today.
and of course great UI execution is important both on your projects and in the portfolio layout because this is how I am assessing your execution level and generic projects with no constraints as the first project that we saw they are ideal to showcase this skill and what I wanted to say to Thuha at the end is that of course great work and thank you for allowing us to review your portfolio and to learn from it and second I noticed that there there are some mistakes in your portfolio that would prevent me from assessing it further. First of all, the fourth project that you have in your portfolio is missing the link. I would very much love to see what you did on this project as well. But when I click on the link, I land on the presentation for the UNESCO project, which is the third project. And I virtually have the same link there. So I've got an impression that you are still working on your portfolio, which is perfectly normal because I also saw some repetition here for example this paragraph is the identical paragraph that you have here so hopefully you will soon clean it up and you are overall aware of some things that you can uh, fix and what I also wanted to give you as an advice is to work on your LinkedIn page because of course when I open a portfolio and I studied I always have a LinkedIn page open because I'd like to confirm some hypotheses. I'd like to understand the overall years of experience that you are working in the industry and so on and so on. And I noticed that in some instances, your LinkedIn page is not matching the portfolio. For example, here, I get an impression that you are still working at Rakuten. At the same time, in your portfolio, at the very first page, you say that you did uh, finish the work there in December last year. So those things, they prevent me from assessing your portfolio and your overall job application. But I have the assumption that you are still in the work in progress. And I don't know if you're applying actively to the jobs, but if you will be applying, then please fix it and make your CV, LinkedIn and portfolio acting as a whole. And that was it for today. Thank you Thuha for allowing us to review your portfolio and to learn from it. And we've got some good ideas ideas that possibly other people can implement to their projects and to their case studies as well. And thank you for everyone who was watching this portfolio review for your time. And if you want your portfolio to be reviewed, then check the link down below. It is completely for free, but the list that I have there is quite huge. So the review is not guaranteed, but I will do my best to get the best portfolios out of this list that have something that everybody can learn from. And don't forget to check the link down down below in the description if you are working on your portfolio and you need my support there's going to be the last program I will launch on the portfolio topic and it will also include CVs job search strategies and LinkedIn optimization as bonuses and this is basically everything I know about creating a perfect portfolio and a converting portfolio from my years working on portfolio myself and being a hiring manager and if you like this video and you want to receive more videos like that then hit the subscribe button down below and click the bell. This way you will get a notification when a new video comes out and I see you next time.